everybody. Tax Day Tea Party Rally on the Boston Common. You know, we, we started this organization about four years ago because we were taxed enough already. And apparently, Governor Patrick and the Massachusetts legislature didn't get the message because right now they are debating raising our taxes by hundreds of millions of dollars. The only debate is how many millions they're going to raise them. And I, I think we're all here to tell them that we are still taxed enough already. So, um, I want to welcome you all here. I'm not going to take too much time today because we have lots of great speakers. I just want to let you know there's a Greater Boston Tea Party um, booth. It's the second blue booth, straight straight ahead there. All our organizations that are um, that are featured here today are in the tents right over here. So please stop by and visit them and, and get to know you know what they're all about and see if there's something that that might interest you there. We have um, lots of elected officials. In, in the audience. We have invited the U.S. Um, Senate candidates to join us here today. And um, I think um, Dan Winslow is going to be in, here in the flesh. And thank you. Um, um, Gomez is, I believe, sending some representatives as well as Mike Sullivan. So please get to meet those people and try to make you know some really good decisions on, on who our next U.S. Senate candidate will be. You may be hearing from some people today that you may not agree with 100%, but that's okay. Because what the Tea Party is here to do is to educate you, to bring the information to you, and have you make the best decisions that you can about you know, who should represent you and, and, and what kind of um, legislation is best for you and your families. So, um, you know, they have a saying in AA, take what you need and leave the rest. So I guess you could think of this like a huge AA meeting, <laughs> except this AA meeting has rap music. We will be unveiling a brand new Tea Party rap song today, so that I, that's going to be the highlight of the day for me anyway, so um, I think you're going to love it. And without further ado, I am going to introduce our MC for the day. Tom Duggan is the editor and publisher of the Valley Patriot newspaper which is distributed in 38 counties, uh, 38 communities in northern Massachusetts and southern New Hampshire. He's also a radio talk show host for WCAP in Lowell and is former political director for Mass Citizens for Marriage, a former member of the Lawrence School Committee, a Carnegie Medal of Honor recipient, and has worked on dozens of political campaigns over the past 25 years. Please welcome our MC, Tom Duggan. Yeah. 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 The most liberal state in the Commonwealth, where we have elected people like Barney Frank, and we have elected people like Ted Kennedy, and we have elected people like Elizabeth Warren. And yet here in the heart, here in the belly of the beast, is all of you. Kind of like a beacon in the wilderness, I think. We have a number of great speakers today. Many of them have many different views on many things. But they're all here to talk to us about things that we believe in and that we find are important. And we want to work with all of them, regardless of their position on other things like social issues. The Tea Party is not about that. The Tea Party is about lowering our taxes, slowing the growth of government, and protecting our Constitution. And one of those people who fights very hard in the forefront of this battle is a guy who's a very good friend of mine, 
and I'm honored to say he's a very good friend of mine, Jeff Katz. <laughs> Jeff Katz has served as a police officer in Philadelphia. Thank you for your service, Jeff. Uh, before trading in his badge for a microphone. He has hosted award-winning local talk shows around the country and was nationally syndicated as well. He received three Associated Press Awards for his work on Boston Radio and writes a monthly column, thank you again, for the Valley Patriot newspaper, my newspaper. Jeff presently travels across the country coaching and speaking on issues relating to personal growth. Today he's going to talk to you about how we can take back this country. Let's give it up for Jeff Katz. Thank you, Tom. It is great to be here. I am, I am always amazed and thrilled to come out to the Tea Party events on the Common and just be amongst friends for a change, because I know so many of us believe we are, we are solidly behind enemy lines a lot of the time. Uh, there was a buzz going around, and I don't know if it's true, that uh, Senator Warren would be visiting but she, it, it's all right. She would only be touring 132nd of the event, so it won't be all that long. As Tom mentioned, we're here for the right reasons, and I want to remind everybody why we're here, as I see so many people who are here the first time when Sarah Palin is here, was here and Tim Pawlenty was here. We are here because we care, and I know it's a trite expression, and it's overused, and it's manipulated, but in this case, it's true. You are here because you understand the greatness of this country. You are here because you understand the threats to this country. You are here because you want to do right by your children and your children's children. Give yourself a round of applause for that. As Tom mentioned, no longer being burdened by a 2 a.m. alarm clock to get to a radio station every day, I've had considerably more free time, and I've been traveling around the country, and I've been speaking on issues of personal growth, positive psychology, motivation, inspiration, and what gets back so many times is, well, what does that have to do with us? Jeff, we're a political movement. No, we're not a political movement. We are a movement of people who simply want to do the right thing. Don't let anyone else define who you are or what you believe. And I heard somebody say it's too late. It's not too late. Well, you're wrong. And let me tell you something. When you buy into the description that other people have painted for you, you got a big problem. Don't buy into it and don't allow anyone else to define who you are. A few days ago, the world lost one of the greatest leaders that we had ever seen, Margaret Thatcher. As I read the obituaries of Margaret Thatcher, I saw words like strong, the Iron Lady, consistent, steel, conservative, and there was one word that was missing, which you will find in biographies written of Margaret Thatcher. You will find the word popping up over and over and over again when you read the writings of people who actually knew Margaret Thatcher. And when I share the word with you, you might be a little surprised. The word was optimistic. Now, I want you to think about this for a second, because Margaret Thatcher was described by those who knew her as optimistic. Winston Churchill was described by those who knew him and worked with him as optimistic. Ronald Reagan was described as optimistic. I was at an event not too long ago, and I was listening to Rudy Giuliani speak on optimism. And he referenced Winston Churchill 
have got me thinking, why is this word optimist or optimistic or optimism associated with so many great leaders? I'm going to tell you why. Because optimism is not just walking around and going, look, it's a sunny sky even when it's pouring rain. Optimism means that you see the problem, you're not ignoring the problem, you know what the problem is, but you are so strong and resolute in your beliefs that you know you can work to fix the problem. My friends, we all need to have a renewed sense of optimism. And I know that the concentration today will be on taxes. I do want to remind everybody that in addition to taxes, there are serious threats to this country coming from terrorist organizations all over the world. And let's not pretend they're not there. Let's understand that we have an administration that feels very comfortable talking with people who wish to do us harm. And that's a problem. When we talk a little bit about what's going to happen at the State House in terms of taxes, we have one of the most bizarre situations I've ever seen. We have a governor who is looking at a half billion dollar tax increase and saying, it's nowhere near enough. And as, as, as you watch this play out in so much of the mainstream media, you are led to believe there is really a battle going on and that those who are arguing for a half billion dollar tax increase are really on your side. If you believe that, well, I'll let you fill in the blanks after that. I'm going to remind you of one thing I said at the first Tea Party event we had here, and then I'm going to turn it over to my friend Tom Duggan. When I was here the first time, and we had 10,000 people or thereabouts on the common, and people said it could never happen, it couldn't happen, it's never going to happen, you're not going to do it, etc., 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 etc. I reminded you of what it was that we were supposed to be, and I'm going to remind you today. We are custodians, and that's all that we are. We are caregivers and we are keepers. Our job is to receive this country, take care of it, knock out a couple of the dings and the dents when they come there, but not to fundamentally change it, not to undo it, not to break it. Our job is to preserve it and pass it on to our children and say, this is America and we're standing on guard for you. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Saturday afternoon, every Saturday morning, and um, someone asked me this morning before I went on the air if I could address this here at the, at the Tea Party Rally. It would take three seconds to do that. You know, the mainstream media paints us out to be a bunch of haters and homophobes and bigots, people who hate immigrants, people who hate blacks, people who hate Latinos. And I wanted to pass along to you because a friend of mine asked me to, that the best way to combat that is look at everything that the media says about us and then not be that. And the way we do that is by policing our own. When we see members of our own Tea Party who are engaged in hateful behavior because they're out in every group, we know that because we're the Tea Party and the media hates us, that those few among us who share those feelings are going to be the ones highlighted on the Channel 5 News. So. If everyone could just, as a Tea Party member, to be a good Tea Party member, could please police your own. But whatever group you belong to, if there are members of your own group that are hurling invectives about gays or making comments about immigrants, let them know gently that's not what the Tea Party is about. The Tea Party